What's our news today? Um, it's a little uncomfortable for us, but uh, we were wrong. It is what it is. Yeah, but that's why that's that's kind of why we're doing this, though. I'm actually really happy that we were wrong. Okay, so um, the first video we ever did for this was that uh, one called "In JavaScript, Everything Is an Object," and uh, I hadn't promoted it for a while. I finally promoted it last week to see what people would think. And very confidently, we, we it took like 45 minutes to explain that everything in JavaScript is an object. And it didn't take a few days after my posting this on the um, JavaScript Google Plus page that... Um, we were eating alive. We, <laughs> we had some really good discussions with, with a few people. We'd like to thank especially John Need, Jeff Schwartz, and Matthew Potter who came to our rescue <laughs> to our teach rescue, us. And we had some good conversations. I had a good lengthy conversation with um, Jeff Schwartz. And uh, we learned some stuff. So we said that everything in JavaScript is an object. And I think the first question we need to answer here is why would we think that? Well, there's lots of reasons. Should we lay on the, the let's, reasons? Let's lay on the evidence for everything being an object. OK. There we oh, go. You've got I one. got one. So one of the first is um, if you fill the prototype with something like the uh, string .prototype test, and you were to write, so you wrote a function on that, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, matter of fact, this even got worse. It got worse when you actually put a property, primitive property on the prototype. Not even a function, just a primitive, right? It would actually access it, which made it even worse. But let's do the function, because I know that works. So if you were to write this, and then write a string and say dot test that would run and return pi right right that that's the first that, gotcha that's pretty compelling i think this this string is acting like an object it has a method on it another example that we had in one of our our notes and this is actually one that i did to think that to in the discovery that everything's an object, right? Uh -huh. False discovery is let's do something like that again and say dot constructor. That returns string. Yet again, a problem. What's really interesting about this though, I remember when we used to say really redundant when you'd say new string. This is kind of a side tangent, sorry. And we were like, yeah, and you just put the string literal in again. That makes no sense. Well, it actually makes sense now. <laughs> yeah, because we said these were the same. We said it was the same to do this as it was to say, we said these are equivalent. Those are synonymous. False. Yeah. Var s equals var s equals. We said that was the same. So what the evidence of this, the reason why these aren't the same, is if you actually access var s, this s, it come back as a string literal high. Mm -hmm. If you did it with this s, with this string, it come back not as that. It come back with this really crazy looking object with all the zero, the, the yeah. chars at the different uh, uh, indexes, as well as if you said s dot um, function right equals a function, that would stick. It, yeah, if you did it. It this would way. stick if you did it this way. So. That's some of the evidences that were definitely against us. Now, well, let's let's go a little further because okay. uh, we weren't just talking about strings and numbers and and stuff like that. We talked. We said a function. So you yeah. could say, I need a new pen. Oh, here you go. Use this one. Var f equals function. And then I can say f dot foo Douglas equals will that. Here. Here. sorry, oh. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> equals something. And then I can I can invoke this function, and I can access its properties, and that's going to give me something back, right? Right. So functions are objects too. Yeah. And um, numbers, we talked about. Oh, this is this is the other thing we got. 
wrong that we've been <laughs> chastised for. You are not a math major, Ben, and you ought to be. We said that you could put this <clears throat> squared function on the number prototype and say math dot pi dot square and that would give back what did I say? Six point two eight two. Was it you or me? I can't remember. Um, Anyways, doesn't matter. We're, this, we're not mathematicians. <laughs> this is wrong. Pi squared is nine something. So another not sorry. Six. Yes, that was the other thing we got wrong. Um, so we were pretty confident about that, but it all came tumbling down when uh, somebody pointed this out. Uh, this is actually very. I think it was um, uh, it was Jeff, right? This is John. Well, John specifically said it first, yeah. but Jeff went into detail. Go ahead and do say what John said. So I made a string, and remember this is an object, right? Now I put something on this. I dot speak equals a function that does something. You put this in your console. And it comes back. It doesn't throw an error or anything. It looks it looks totally. It normal. looks like you augmented that string it object. Looks like I put this on the string object. Right. But when well, you try an object, <laughs> when you try and access that, speak. This is going to return undefined. So our first thought was well, since everything is an object. Um, that Maybe means it that froze or something. What happens right? is, is JavaScript's freezing this object for you. Right. Which made a little sense, and we actually did a video about that. Boy, did we try to take that down quickly? And uh, we took it down quickly. Um, and we argued with a with a bunch of people on Google Plus for a good many days about um, what was going on here, and finally we appealed to the spec, which we probably should have done first. And the spec is right. There is such thing as a primitive in JavaScript. You can have primitive numbers, primitive strings, primitive booleans, and uh, the primitive other things. Numbers, strings, and... Uh, nulls and undefines. Correct. There are... Uh, we're missing one. Objects. An obvious one. And objects. But that's not really... That's not a primitive. That's not primitive. So the primitive is number, string... Yeah. Anyways, Anyways there is such those. thing as primitives. There are primitives <laughs> in JavaScript, and when you use the string literal or the number literal or the boolean literals, oh, we don't have the spec out anymore. Yeah, no, oh, it's it's over there. Okay, I don't know. Your it, <laughs> <laughs> this is a primitive value. This is not an object. So the question is, why in the world are you able to augment this thing's prototype right. and get object behavior out of it? How come you can? Um, Forgot the other example I was going to use. But why does it act like an object? That's the get value part of the spec that I want to tear up. Okay. <laughs> yes. It, it just doesn't make any sense because, you know, there's people talk about black boxes in job and, and just programming all together. Boy, does, is this like the biggest black box ever because it does all this black, horrible magic. And what it does is when you try to access a primitive, it then boxes it. So let's describe what goes on. Okay, if, um, if you're into light reading, you can check <laughs> out 8.7.1. Go to the ECMAScript version 5.1 spec and Correct. look up 8.7.1. And um, in a lot of difficult to read, well, I don't know, maybe it's not difficult to read. But anyway, the gist of it is... Okay. If you have a primitive value, so this is number, string, object, eh. or yeah, not, numbers, not number, object. Yeah. Num number, string, booleans. Okay. If you have one of these, um, and you try and access it, JavaScript is going to hurry up really quick and say, new. So in between, string. in between here. <laughs> And there, something magic happens, is what you're saying. Just by putting the dot on there, JavaScript makes you a new string thing. And this has been called boxing. But yeah, It boxes it up. Boxing can apparently mean something else. Different other languages. But this really is boxing it up into it. We're going to call it boxing. Yeah, it makes it, sense. It puts it in a, in a string object, wraps it up, and that's how you get the prototypal lookups. 
Correct. Because it's making a string object. It can the string prototype. It can go up there and find everything it needs. Then as soon as you're done with this accessor, keep going. It unboxes it, and that object that you made disappears forever. That's what doesn't make any sense. I'm actually testing right now. If you did a string dot boo, yep. Okay, that's the, this is what bothers me the most. Okay, let me see that real quick. So if you actually augmented, so if you said string dot prototype dot boo equals a string that's going to excite you, and you do this, um, say, put a space in there so we get dot boo, guess what happens? It returns that. Returns boo. That's what's confusing. Because now you can access a property on what looks to be like a primitive. But it's not. Because what happened, right, is in between there and here, we got a new string object. Then it accesses the prototype. And if the prototype has a primitive on it, it doesn't care. It just gives it back to you. So even though you can't save things to this string particularly, you can save things onto the string prototype, which would be on every string. But it still gives you this, and that's this bizarro behavior. Yeah. And horrible. So, so this is what's happening. So this, if you look at the spec, it's 8.7.1. 8 8 it's under get value. It tells you exactly how it boxes it up, um, in what circumstances. Basically, it's a primitive circumstance. Mm -hmm. And sends the primitive value into the constructor, and then you get the whole object that's boxed. But that, then what's weird is that, that boxed object's destroyed. Yeah. You can't ever get at it. Because it's, it's, it's a boxed object, but this is what confused me, and I, this is on the, we're just flying by the seat of our pants. You can't even assign at that point, because remember when we assigned it, when you say dot, it gets that boxed object, right? So what's happening when you assign to that boxed object? Is it a frozen boxed object? I don't know. That's Well, you can't assign to a primitive. Right, but the but the point is, is that it's oh, boxed by that point. Oh, you to that boo? Yeah, it's already boxed at that point. So I, anyways, that's a good question. There's some Try weird that. things I don't understand, but it is being boxed up. Nonetheless, it's being boxed. So, first of all, hopefully, in that video, which you, I think you should still go watch, because like 90% of that video is still valid. Everything, in fact, I changed the name of the video. Now, instead of everything in JavaScript is an object, it's everything acts like an object because as soon as you uh, as, as soon as you try and access any primitive type it shows up as an object so on one level this seems like meaningless and useless pedantic discussion about the minutia of stuff that doesn't really matter because in the execution of your program everything really does act like an object so why do we care there's only that one case where we tried to assign something to a primitive, mm -hmm. that it actually has any side effects. And one other case, which is type of. And that's where some other problems come up. And I think this is where a lot of the misunderstanding is, right? So we discovered in, in the search of this that there's some primitive types. Yes. Or types given to JavaScript. Yeah. And that is found in, what was that, that number? Uh, you read them out. Section eight. Section. Wow. See, Ben is like on this. the type. Um, a re really, if you want to go read this back, and I recommend you do. Um, section four is really good. It, it defines some things, and then section eight is what actually type, talks about types. There are some. Go ahead. There are some um, types made already available in JavaScript. Um, if you have used languages like C and C++ and Java and all these compiled languages, when the compiler runs, as near as I understand it, all of the classes that you define become static for the program. They become defined types inside the program. Right. JavaScript is totally dynamic, almost totally dynamic. Right. It turns out JavaScript is totally like nothing. <laughs> it's it's not, like, just like itself. But there are only... What did we decide? So there's undefined type, so write it. Undefined. There's null type. Null. There's the Boolean type. The string type. 
the number type, and the object type. So essentially, this is this is the, all the types we get. This is these are the only types that JavaScript even knows about, and they're right. the only types that JavaScript can know about. When we talk about types, mm -hmm. we're not talking about um, objects that you define, constructors you define. That's something else. Those are instances. So, so there's two other things that are interesting. These are the only types that the language knows about, but we're fully aware of two other things that we use a lot. Array. And a function. Function. But those obviously come from the base object type. Yes, in the spec, um, sorry, I'm going to refer back here. There are types. And those are the ones we've listed. You're probably talking, you can't see me. There are There's also native objects. Right, which are different. So this is these. These are types, right? So then go ahead. These are native objects. So those are native. Because they're defined by the ECMAScript standard. So things like that would be array, date, right? Yeah, date, date array, array function, function, and math. So these are these are defined by the spec, therefore they're the native objects. And each of these consequently um, inherit from the object. So that's why types don't have those things that we use quite a bit. What's really interesting is if if array is just an object, how does it have its length property that's magical? But so this anyways, that's another object. That's understanding object. this made me understand the type of operator, because you've you've used this before and it's confused you. You can say type of new, well, I'm going to do that, type of array, and you're thinking, well, this is obviously an array, right? Oh, obviously. It's obviously let's see, an let's array. Let's look it up. Let's look it up. Oh, shoot. Oh, we don't have a type There's named no type. array, and the array actually is an object. Hmm. So type of array returns object. Yeah, that becomes problem. Well, by the way, we're going to define what's bad about type of too. <laughs> In a second, yeah. <laughs> okay. So this is why when you say type of uh, a number, you get number. So it found it. Because there is a type called number. Are you type of a string? You get a string. Type right. of true, you get boolean. Right. Type of null, you get, you get wait. objects. What the heck? Now, this is another... Okay, so okay, we'll talk about that guy? in a second. But okay. I just want to drive this home. The type of is not dealing with objects. It's dealing with the actual built-in types. I'm going to say static, even though they're not technically static types of the language. These things. Right. So that that made type of make sense to me. Oh, oh almost. 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 Until we went and looked at the type of spec, which you can find at eleven point four <laughs> point. Three. And all of a sudden, there becomes this magical. There's more magic. You've done this. So type of. Type of function. Now, the, a function is not a type, but we get back function anyway. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because. Type of, they just, it just couldn't be pure, because if anything <laughs> in the language was pure, the whole thing would fall apart. There is actually a table. 11.4.3, uh, right? 11.4.3 that says, when you call type of, if you give it one of these, say boolean, string, number, number object, object, if it's a special kind of object that can be evaluated, function. That can be invoked. Evoked. Not, yeah, so. Yeah, that's right. Invoked. In, an invocable object. Yeah, it, it says exactly. It says that it hosts the impl or implements call. Yeah. This is internal call, by the way. Yeah, this isn't function .prototype call. Correct. This is this is yeah. Then you get a function, and the one that I really have no idea of. If you hand in null, you get object back. Well, what I found really interesting, and uh, people complain about the spec of JavaScript. Obviously, it was made in a rush, and poor Brendan Eich is like he said the other day, and it's like this this teenage child. He can't just <laughs> he's, he's really grown outside his realms of controllability. And anyways, it's it's sad because we're complaining about these things, but we just need to know about them. We can't yes. complain about it. We just this is not a JavaScript bash fest. 
we love JavaScript. Right. Few people in the world probably love JavaScript as much as we do. Correct. But this isn't why we love it. <laughs> we know this stuff so that we can work with it. Well, and we always, and, and a lot of us, I mean, we use typo so much in our code, we know that null does this. That's why I null check versus doing the type of on null. Um, all the others I do the, the type check. On arrays, I have to use the array that is array. There's that uh, crazy uh, polyfill that you can use that checks the, does that call on the raise prototype slice, I can't remember what it's slice or yeah. something, that, that then tells you, it's not slice, but uh, to string or something. Um, anyways, that, there's a way to polyfill it. So you may as well polyfill it and say array dot is array to right. see if it's an array. So it's just knowing this exists. Well, I guess what bothered me the most is when they define the types in eight point whatever, then they go and make a, a unary, it just doesn't make any sense yes. to me. Yes, there's a lot of things that don't make any sense. But I think the moral of our story here is that um, we have to know these things to really use the language. We were wrong when we said everything is an object. Correct. And the best thing that could have happened was for us to say everything is an object, put that on the internet, and for the internet to come back and say, no, no it's, it's not. not. Because someday I would have been tempted to say, I'm programming in my code, and I say, 12, and for some reason, I really don't know why I would do this, <laughs> say, oh, I want this 12 to have bar a equals 12, 12. dot, um, I need to keep 12, track of... 12. Let's say 12, then do a dot. Oh, something. yeah. Okay, I need to keep track of the fact that this is, like, has three significant figures, so I can say a dot sig fig <laughs> equals 3. I mean, that might be useful to hang around. Yeah, right? I don't know why you'd ever do it, but yeah, that's, that's meaningful. <laughs> and then I would be surprised later on when I try to access that and get them to find and scratch my head and think, but everything is an object. <laughs> and so that's, that's why it's important to know this. And I don't think that's, that ends it. <laughs> yes, um, we, we do like JavaScript. We love it. There's one more. An instance of it is what we were going to talk about. Oh, yeah. The reason why type of, uh, we don't you use type of for basically the primitive is what I do. So except for null. <laughs> except for null. And the rest of the uh, times we use instance of. We use instance of a lot in our hierarchy chain of POCOs. Yeah. And so we can know if, hey, this, this employee is of type person, so, so to speak. Of yeah. type, which is really isn't a type, it's instance of. So it's different. Yeah. So we were absolutely wrong about the square of pi. Absolutely. Totally and completely unequivocally wrong. No, we were right. I'm uh, just <laughs> but the square of pi at the time. <laughs> yeah, that's, right, that's right. But we were not completely wrong about everything being an object because as far as your program concerned, pretty much most of the time you can use everything as if it were an object. And that is one of the beautiful magic things about this is a magic. One of the wonderful things about JavaScript that we love, but it's important for you to know exactly what's going on so that you don't get bit. And so here's the homework, right? I have homework for those who watch this. Figure out what happens when we do the dot, because I want to know that primitive gets boxed up. We then assign to that boxed up primitive a value what is happening. So we need to discover and try to understand why that value doesn't save. Because remember how we said, you can say new string, s equals new string, uh -huh. and then add properties to it. You can do that when you do it in inline code. But when it boxes it up itself, you cannot. You can access it as, as you know, the prototype and so forth. So I'd like to have a lively discussion about why, uh, let's just do that real quick, because we were discussing that. So why does this, you got that black one? It's right here. Yeah. So why, why does this, because we were saying if you said var string is equal to a string, right? We'll say s. That, you can, if you do this, the second that you do this accessor. str. Yeah, it boxes, it, oh sorry. That was the value. str dot, it's boxed up, right? It's as if you've passed it in, that's what it says in the spec with get value, uh -huh. as if you passed it in the constructor of the string. Well, at that point, then it should have returned you. <laughs> it just like disappears. I guess, I guess there's, it doesn't save it. But anyways, let's have a lively discussion on why that doesn't work. Because it is a boxed up at that point, the second you try to access it. Yeah. Why doesn't it not save? I guess it wouldn't save to the string, because the string is still a reference to the, 
is not referenced. I guess. What would you call that? But anyways. Okay, I'm not sure what he just said. But, but <laughs> let's have a lively discussion because I'd like to understand that better. I think it's because string is still this, and when you when you say the dot operator, it's not returning back the string; it's returning back the value that you just assigned to that. You know, in the console. So you're not, oh, yeah. anyways. So that I just answered my own question. We're not going to have a lively discussion. <laughs> That's the other reason we do these. It's just to have yeah. spontaneous oh, thoughts. And I will say, the last moral to the story, this very moral video we've had today, is that the spec is not as scary as you might think it is. Spend some time there and you'll have a lot of revelation. Yeah. That's it. Thanks again for correcting us. Please feel free to do so at any time because... Um, that's, that's what we're here to do. That's what we want. And we want to learn it just as badly as you. Yes. Thanks. Thanks.